LED lights first became popular, you know, on use on semi trailers and semi trucks because these things get exposed to a lot of vibration, a lot of uh, different climate conditions where bulbs were just constantly burning out. So, you know, when I first noticed LED lights, it was uh, on a semi trailer of all things. And then as time went by, then, you know, companies like Cadillac started making their taillights and fancy strings of LED lights. And nowadays they've become you know, second nature to almost every new car on the market. But, you know, what's great is the companies that were actually producing LEDs for those early semi trucks are now making them for classic cars. And what I really love is the United Pacific line, and even though they were big in the semi lights, they've also fully embraced the classic car market. And what they've done is they've introduced complete lines of LED. They've got like over 7,000 classic car parts in their inventory, including, you know, what we're gonna do today is work on this great Chevy C10 pickup. And we're gonna be actually putting some, some powerful uh, uh, LED headlights into this thing. And it, they run 1600 lumens on high, high beam, which is insanely bright. They're gonna be a nice white light too. And uh, we're also gonna put in a set of sequential tail light, LED tail lights. And they have a factory mirror, a factory resembling mirror that has sort of in disguise little arrows that, you know, give good turn signal indication out on the side. So this is just some of the parts they offer for the C10. They have like 800 parts that just for 1960 to 87 Chevrolet C10 pickup. So if these aren't the parts you want to install, go check it out. They have great side lights, you know, backup lights, turn signal lights. Uh, as well as some uh, sheet metal parts and vent windows and a whole litany of parts for, you know, just this great little ride. And with that, you know, I'm going to introduce Garrett Carlson here. Garrett is, you know, the owner of this great truck and he's probably, get, we're going to be doing these upgrades and you can probably share a little bit about the truck and some of its history. Yeah, well, this is a 1969 CST-10 that was originally a 396 air conditioning, power steering, power brake truck short box, which was uh, kind of unique. Uh, they didn't make many with the big block Chevrolets in it. I've done a bunch of upgrades to it. I've put on the whole uh, Hotchkiss uh, um, suspension on it uh, from front to rear, um, put a fuel cell in the back and actually upgraded the motor to a 462 big block. And um, it's, uh, it's a fun truck. Okay. I, uh, I love it and uh, I've had it for a long time. So it's got a lot of memories. Awesome. Well, let's get started. We're going to start with actually putting the headlights in this truck. You know, I'm dying to see what these look like. Yes, I am too. I'm getting excited to see the product in the truck and actually have some decent headlights when I'm driving down the road. <laughs> awesome. So. Let's get going. Okay, now to install the uh, headlights on the C10s, there's a beauty ring that's around the, uh, the headlight. And you have to take that beauty ring off. There's four screws on that. And uh, so you pull out all four of them screws. And now, there's two on, this, on the, each side and there's one at the very top. What I like to do is leave the top one in last so the headlight doesn't uh, fall down and bend the brackets. And I got the beauty ring out. I had the little half moons in there, which we won't be installing back in it now. Now that the headlight is out, we are ready to install the, uh, new, the new headlight. Okay, and it just plugs right in. They got the same type of brackets, the same type of plug that goes on the, uh, um, the stock one here. And we'll get that in there. And now there's some little tabs that are on the side that actually center it in uh, the right position. You can kind of turn that, turn the uh, headlight and you'll feel it kind of fall into the brackets. What we'll do is we'll get the top screw in there first to kind of hold everything in position. And then go back around and make sure that all the screws are tight and ready to install the beauty ring. 
and there it is, it's all installed. Okay, now to replace the rear tail lights here and blinkers, what, um, what you'll have to do is there's just two screws, two screws here. You don't, do not need to replace the, uh, or uh, disassemble the uh, beauty ring. But you just pull out the two screws that are here and you can kind of pull that uh, the red one out and just disassemble the other LED. Now this is the uh, current LED light that I um, had. It's a kind of a replacement for the 1157 bulbs and uh, they're not uh, very, very bright in the back. Pacific um, also supplies a bracket, new, new bracket to put in there. We won't be using the new bracket today. Um, mine are actually in uh, pretty decent shape, but I will be using the new uh, the, the gasket that comes with it. And it's just a matter of pulling that out and setting that one in. You can see this one here has been a little uh, used. So we'll put the, put the new one in there. And now on these, uh, the tail lights here and brake lights, they have a, uh, a little um, dip switch on here. Now you can flip that dip switch um, in the center. It just lights up all of the LEDs when you put your blinker on. And now if you slide it off to the right, it would be to the left side. If it's on the left, left side of the truck, you'd move the, the, the blinker as you're looking at it to the right, which would be to this side. And when you put that in, now that will make the uh, blinkers Okay, I have corrected. Now, if you flip it to the, let's try it now. If you flip it to the right, you might have to play with it. Try the blinkers now. There you go. So that would be that it, it kind of goes sequential over. Now, if you keep that in, at dip switch in the center, it just, it just flashes all of them at one time. It's whatever your preference is. I'm going to flip it over to the over to the right or the to the side there, so they actually blink like that. And then it's just a matter of reinstalling the 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 blinker in there and adding and putting the two screws back in. Now that this one is installed, we can go to the other side and we can complete the back. Now, when installing LED tail lights, you have to install a different type of flasher because it doesn't have enough resistance with the bulbs um, to operate the flashers. So you have to install a, uh, an electronic one and um, United Pacific offers one here, which is a, a great product. Um, and it's a matter of just installing that where your old flasher is. And you have to, uh, if you notice here, it's, they also have a reverse polarity plug that's, that's on it. This vehicle here, you need to have that installed. So you just install that onto the flasher and then you can install this where your old flasher was. Now we checked the flashes and we found out that this is the one, the bottom one here is actually the one for the blinkers. So we just need to pull that one out, install the new one in here. And I already found it. I already had a, a screw in here for a ground. We can get that in there and then just tighten that up. United Pacific also has mirrors that actually have blinkers on them, which are uh, kind of nice to have, especially if there's a car in your, in your blind spot or up in front of your vehicle, and they can actually see them if you're trying to move over. Uh, motorcycle riders really like these. Now to install these, we have to pull off the old mirror. They do come with the, uh, the bracket. If you don't have a mirror on your side right now, and you're gonna go with this style, you have to install this bracket also. Now when installing this, one, one thing that's kind of important is you've got to make sure that this window is all the way up in the vehicle, otherwise you won't be able to get access over to the mirror. So once you get that um, all the way up, then you can just pull off your handles and that, there's a, they make a special tool for this, it just pulls those slips off. And just get them off. And there went a clip.
Very important on this that you don't get it around the, uh, the window channel. You wanna make sure that, so when you roll your window down, it's not gonna hook that wire. So you gotta make sure it's on the outside of that when you come in to drill the hole. Now I drilled a hole through the, through the door here and um, on the C10s there's another uh, chamber in here which you have to drill through that also. And then I stuck a stiff wire through here and tied it on to get it out through the door frame or through the edge of the door. And now we'll have the same thing to drill through the, through the, uh, the cab. And you'll see right where your dome light, where your dome light is, I'm gonna go right above that and then try to come out the same hole down here where the uh, actual dome light, dome light switch is on the side. What I did is I went and uh, got a couple of little rubber grommets here that uh, go in the door and a little bit of fuel line. Um, it's just a little rubber, rubber piece here that will, will flex and it won't damage the wires. So we'll just get that, uh, get that in there and put the grommets around the thing so it doesn't uh, short out. Okay, now on this here, the wire, the one that has the white stripes on it is the power wire. The other one is the ground. So I'm gonna put this up to the ground up here that I have here for my flasher. And now the other wire, all we need to do is to tie that to the blinker wire. And you can get to that right here on the steering column. What we're gonna use here is we're gonna use, the, they sell these to, uh, you know, to add like a trailer, trailer harness. And they actually work really nice because you can uh, put it around the wire and then put your wire in there and just, and just clip it down and it'll make a, make a good connection. What I'm gonna do is you see the blue, this blue wire comes, this is for the steering column. So if you ever have to take your steering column out, um, you know, you don't wanna put it on that side there. So there's two blue wires here, so I wanna go down here on one of these here. So then if you pull your steering wheel, the steering column out, you're not gonna have to disconnect this wire. Well, that completes our installation of, you know, the the United Pacific taillights and the headlights, which were pretty much plug and play. And of course, we kind of anticipated that the mirror was going to give us a little trouble because we're putting a wired mirror in where there wasn't one before. Yep. Yeah, the mirror, you know, we have to uh, drill a hole through the door and then you got to kind of fish it through the, uh, the door into the, into the cab of the, uh, the, the truck. And uh, it can be uh, a little tough, but uh, with a little patience, you can get it through there. We had to go and fabricate a little bit of uh, hose and some grommets and stuff just so the wire doesn't get damaged in that when it's going through there. But uh, it turned out really nice, and uh, it's a nice product. I know. I, you know, what I really love about these mirrors, they just look bone stock. Yep. Until you actually turn the signal on, then the, right. the, the arrows show up, and it's like, wow, that is cool. That is just kind of hidden away, you know? So... Yeah, uh, so when you're at the car show, nobody knows the difference, but when you're on the road, you got that added safety yep. feature. And that's and that's nice for, you know, other people and for also for for my vehicle for safety of that if my blinker comes on, I'm starting to move over and I can't see the vehicle, it, hopefully they'll give me a toot or you know, let you know that they're there. Yep. Let me know that they're there. That, that's cool. Yep. Yeah, you know, what I liked about all the, all the United Pacific products was they were all built well, you know? They, yes. It was headlight, you know? They, it's a good looking unit, but it also, it's like, it's not skimpy. That thing's no. got some weight to it. And yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. I'm uh, getting excited to drive it at night to see how my headlights actually uh, work at nighttime. Yeah, that'd be great. And, you know, that and, you know, what I like is, you know, in the United Pacific, they've got a reputation already in good lighting, but, you know, they continue to build on, you know, quality uh, aftermarket products for the classic car industry. They've got like 32 Ford Roadster bodies. They've got, uh, road, uh, they got uh, 34 Ford pickup bodies. And now lately they've introduced early generation Bronco bodies. So not only are they doing lighting and, and a lot of the parts for the C10, they've also got a complete line of parts that will, you know, in, you know, make the lives easier for a lot of enthusiasts. Yes. No, I'm, uh, I'm happy with the product. I just um, can't wait to get it back on the road. And, get out and trade. Go and, have fun again. And go off on some fun again. Yep. Yep.